Hello, my name is Annika Weir, and I'm in Miss Watson's Grade 9 English Class Block 3. I love trying new things and going on adventures. However, I strongly dislike chocolate. In preparation for this video, I learned lots about First Nations cultures, customs, and symbolism, and how to write powerful poetry. In this video, I'll be showing some of my poetry. Here we go! This is my free verse symbol poem about dream catchers. Ever since I was little, I always had a dream catcher, and it's always given me a sense of protection and reliance from which I tried to draw on. For my poetic devices, I used alliteration, metaphors, and personification. For the alliteration, I used all negative words to help reiterate the idea of when you're down, the dream catcher will never leave you. My whole poem is a metaphor for I'm comparing a dream catcher to the person in your life who is always there for you and will never let you down. And as for personification, a dream catcher cannot actually keep it protect your dreams and cannot promise something. However, those are words that resonate the theme of my poem. I hope you enjoy. In my First Nations culture poem, Never Forget, I put myself in the First Nations shoes and how they felt during the whole process. First, a people trying to get their culture annihilated, and then during the reconciliation. In the poem, Never Forget, when I mention they, it refers to the residential school teachers and the government. In my poem, I used an automatopoeia to help picture a fire burning everything in sight. Later on, I used a hyperbole to help people imagine a, a burning heart relating to the punishments the First Nations received. And lastly, I used another hyperbole to describe how the teachers are trying to degrade the First Nations when the First Nations go against the teachers. However, the, teach the teachers' actions are in vain because the First Nations will try to never give in to their demands. I hope you enjoy. These are my haiku poems based on two grandfather teachings. My first one is about love, and my second is about bravery. I chose love because people say it is the most powerful emotion of all. The layout of my poem is basically giving my definition of love. For my poetic device, I use a hyperbole to show the insurmountable amounts of respect given to the people which helps make up love. For my brave poem, I wanted it to resonate with the First Nations. I used a metaphor and a personification to refer back to to what the First Nations experienced. For example, I said in the poem, defeat the monster, which means that you have to defeat the residential schools. I've, I've given the poem personification by comparing the school to a monster, which gives it human-like qualities, and a metaphor by comparing the school to a monster. And in the following lines, I talk about what you have to do to defeat them. Moon, an everlasting lantern for those lost souls seeking refuge from the pounding waves of the ocean, guiding a sailor ship's home from a day on the whirling seas, refuge from the dark, a child petrified of the monster under their bed, and for the deceased, the light will be their guide to what's beyond. For just like moths to a light bulb, the light attracts those who need it. The moon is an everlasting lantern, giving those who need it strength, comfort, and peace. When you need the light, the light will always be there, for it, for it is an everlasting lantern known as the moon. In First Nations culture, the moon is known as the nighttime protector of humans and is credited with providing direction, vision, and guidance, from which I tried to draw on. In my poem, I have a simile, a metaphor, and personification. My simile is just like moths to a light bulb. In it, I compared the moths to people who desperately need the light and are automatically drawn to it. To it. I also compared the light bulb to the moon. For the metaphor, I compared the moon to an everlasting lantern because the moon is always there night after night, shine, shining down from the sky. My last literary device is personification. In my poem, I say giving those who need it strength, comfort, and peace. I try to make the moon like a friend who you can rely on. For my choice poem, I decided to do a First Nations symbol poem on the raven. In First Nations culture, the raven is recognized as the bringer of light. In this poem, I try to show that things are seldom what they seem. So even though ravens seem as powerful animals, ravens have their insecurities just like the rest of us. In my poem, I have a simile, a metaphor, and an automatopoeia. For the automatopoeia, I tried to give the raven the effect of flying over everything light below it. For the simile, I gave the description of the raven being pitch black, helping to show its vulnerability. And for the metaphor, I directly contradicted the myth about ravens bringing light, for this raven feels insecure. I hope you enjoy. I hope you enjoyed my poetry, and thank you for being my audience. Furthermore, I would like to thank Alex Nelson, Mr. McKenzie, Miss Watson, and Starla Anderson for giving me their insights, ideas, and stories. It is really appreciated.